Hello, so continuing on this biweekly contest 15, second problem, remove covered intervals, says that given a list of intervals, remove all intervals that are covered by another interval in the list, which means basically AB is considered covered by, a, by the interval CD if A is, if C is smaller, yeah, the, the wording is a little bit hard to get, but essentially here you can see A is bigger than C, D is bigger than um, bigger than D, D is bigger than B, so that means that the interval AB is inside the interval CD, so it's covered by it. Essentially, if we look at, at the example here, you can see 2, 8 and 3, 6. 3, 6 is entirely inside 2, 8. And so we say that 3, 6 is covered by 2, 8. And why is that? Because let's say here, A, B is cover A, A is 2 and 8 is B. Is B. Um, so C, you could see here, C, 3 is, um, is bigger than 2, but 8 is bigger than 6, right? So that's essentially what it means. And the goal here is to return the remaining intervals, which means the intervals that are not covered by anything. And here, if you look at the um, the constraint, the length of the interval is 1000, and um, the interval range can be 10 to the power of 5. Um, and all the intervals are, don't have the, all the intervals have different, uh, the start is different than the end. Um, and if we look at this example again, um, 3, 6 is completely covered by 2, 8, so 3, 6 is, doesn't, we remove it, and so we are left with 1, 4, since it's not covered by anything, and 2, 8, since also it's not covered by anything. Notice they still overlap, there is nothing wrong with overlapping, it just, we just remove those that are covered, and so we return, end up returning those left, which is 1, 4, and 2, 8. Um, okay, so, so the first simple way that we can solve this problem is, Okay, let's just pick every interval and check if there is another interval that covers it. If it, there is, then we should remove that interval. If there isn't, then we should continue and check the next interval, right? So basically the steps would be just for every interval. Just check if there is an interval that covers it. If there is an interval that covers it. So that would mean for every interval, I mean we need to go through, let's say, for the interval is a, b, and its index is i, so we would enumerate um, intervals, right? And then we will start out with all the intervals remaining, and we will remove those that are um, covered, right? So remove it from the remaining. If we find one, if we find one, that covers it, that is, then that means we remove it from the remaining intervals. So very straightforward. So here we go through the intervals and check, we, will, we need to check here if there is an interval that covers interval i. And so to do that, let's just check all of them, right? So again, we will check all the intervals, CD here, right? And we need to make sure that, it, of course, it will be covered by itself. And so we will need to prevent detecting that as, as covered by. So we need to check that uh, I is different than J, which means their index is not the same here, right? And then we check if it's covered by it, if CD covers AB. How do we do that? We use the exact formula that the problem gives us. So we want to check if AB is covered by interval CD. So we could just use this formula. And so, and this. So if this happens, that means AB is covered by, is covered by, CD, right? And so that would mean, well, a, B, we need to remove AB because we found an interval that covers it. So we say remaining 
we subtract one because we found one interval that is already covered by something so it's not among the ones that we need to return but and once we find one interval that covers it and we removed it there is no need to check if there is another interval that covers it it's or we know already that it's covered by one and that's all we need to remove it and so we can just break out of the slope so that we can check this uh, another interval and see if we find another one that covers it and that's pretty much all there is to it and this one is simpler because there are no like indices indices to get wrong and so we could um, easily um, uh, solve it with it um, okay so let's submit okay so this passes the test cases um, okay so for the other w method there is another way to solve this basically um, and so for that other way is we can notice something so if we solve the intervals by in ascending order which means basically it's by um, start first and then um, if the starts are equal then we start by ending always in ascending order right <laughs> then we will end up with only one case only two possible cases right or maybe three potentially but one case is we could have the first interval like this so this would be interval one um, Let's call this one interval one. And then the second interval eight maybe is completely contained in it, right? Maybe it's like this. The other case that we can have is maybe the interval is like this. Since they are sorted by start, so the first one's start has to be before the second one. Or maybe this is the first one, and then it starts like this and ends after the end of it. Because... <laughs> So we would have because the starts has to be same, has to be um, sorted right. So maybe it's like this, or the other potential case is that the intervals are like this. So once this one ends, after it maybe we would have the second interval at some point, right? And so w the the only case where we need to um, not count the interval is this first case, right? So it's only this case, right? And so let's just give these the their um, a name, right? So let's say this is C and this is D and this is A and this is B. So E2 is contained in E1 if basically C um, C is less than or equal to A, right? And B has to be less than or equal to d because why less than or equal because maybe it's like this they have the same values and at that point they are um, still a b is contained in c d right and so so with this case um, we know it's covered all the other case all the other cases um, the interval e2 is not covered by e1 right and so this, these cases here, which is the else case, right? Here, not covered. And so we, we should count them, right? And so this gives us the a hint of, <coughs> of what should we do. Now, another thing is that, well, now once we say that E2 is contained in E1, what should happen for the next interval? So let's say we have another interval, maybe contained like this. Maybe this is I3. So what should we do then? Well, I3, we should compare it against AB. Check if it's contained in... <coughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean this one. Because I3, we can check still against CD. I mean this case, for example. We should... The next one maybe is contained in E2. Which means here for us that we will need to update. So this is CD, AB. So we will need to start checking once we check we determine that it's not covered by CD. We need to update our CD values so that C becomes here and D becomes here, and this becomes A and this becomes B. So that means that in the else case, what we will need to do is we will need to at least say CD is equal to the current interval, so that for the next iteration we can use it. And then we will need to, of course, increment i so that 
the next interval that we'll be looking at would be this one. <coughs> and here too, we'll need to increment i. And so our algorithm then will look like the following. So if we define our method here for remove covered interval, is, um, we would have, we would first need to sort the intervals in ascending order, so that's just intervals that sort. And then after that, we will um, define our CD as for the first interval. So we'll start out with them um, pointing to the first interval. And then from there, we will need to um, define some I value that we will initialize to the second interval if there is one, right? And then we'll do a while we haven't processed all intervals. So while I is less than the intervals. And I'm just going to keep track of the contained intervals in a in a list. Or maybe just count them. Just count the, the covered intervals. Let's call them covered instead. So let's count the covered intervals. So if we count the covered intervals to get the remaining ones, we can just take the length of the intervals minus the covered ones, right? And so here, um, let's say AB is going to be equal to the current interval, right? which is the one we are examining at each point. And so it would be intervals of i. And now we'll check if it's contained using the formula here that we said. And so that this is basically, in, in my case, this is i2. And cd will keep always track of the, of the interval i1 in this um, representation here. And so we will check using this covering check that the problem gives us if c is less than a and b is less than or equal to d, right? Then that means it's covered. So that means that we will need to increase covered by one. And then we will need to go examine the next interval. Otherwise, it's not covered, right? So as I said, we will need to update a and b so that the when we go to the next interval, we will compare it against the interval before it, right? So that would mean in the else, we'll say C and D become intervals of I. And then we'll increment I again. And at the end, we'll need return. The remaining ones is just anything that wasn't covered. So the length of intervals then minus uh, cover. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah. So sorting makes this easier to do. So let's uh, write this in lead code and make sure it passes the test cases. Um, okay, so now let's write the what we just saw in the overview. So I'm just actually going to copy it since we already wrote it. So just sorting and then um, so this we said we are going to use a variable instead. So covered gets initialized to zero, i to one. And here we just need to say covered plus one and subtract to get the remaining, we just subtract the covered from the length of the interval. The rest is the exact same thing um, that we just saw in the overview. And so let's submit this and make sure it passes. Okay, so that passes the test cases. Um, and uh, yeah, you could see here, we go through the interval only once, right? The list of intervals only once. So it's uh, O of n in this portion here, n is the length of the intervals, but the sorting is O of n like n, so overall it's O of n like n. Um, yeah, so that's it pretty much for this problem. Thanks for watching. And